why you have to be willing to lose anything to gain everything. Well, that's the ultimate paradox of life, right? All this time we're trying to have more shit, do more shit, achieve more. But in reality, sometimes our desires can hold us back from achieving what it is that we actually want to achieve. Almost becoming like a mental handicap in a way. For instance, when first starting off my clothing brand, Itchy Apparel, I had to get over the desire to have a successful business and embrace the possibility that it would fail and that it could fail horribly. For me at the time, it failing horribly was me losing $700. And it's a strange paradox that always on the other side of fear is where your true achievement lies. Because if I hadn't been able to get over my initial fear of fa uh, failure and let go of the outcome, and what really pushed me to actually do it was take it as a learning experience, that would have never happened. And I wouldn't be in the place that I am now. So that's the weird paradox of life. Whatever you want to achieve, you have to be willing to let go of it or let go of the outcome before you can achieve it. Just like money, for me not with money, it's not so much the money itself that drives me. Money is almost a way of keeping score. I just enjoy doing the, the daily things, being productive, and that leads to money. So it's, money's not the focus of the uh, business anymore. If it was the focus, it would probably be hard for me to make decisions like purchasing certain things to increase uh, efficiency and um, or just uh, spending money on myself like on things like books personal development so that I could I could I can work more efficiently in whatever I'm doing and I, I want to talk about this because we live in such a, a results driven outcome driven society but if you really think about it if you're always trying to control the outcome or get a specific result you're not in a, a state of abundance you're caring too much about what could happen instead of focusing on what you can do right now to achieve the best outcome. It's like you're having a one foot on the brake and another foot on the gas. You're just thinking too much. And that stops a lot of people. We live in a culture now. It's very, uh, it's very logical and we want to know all the things. We want everything to be... Uh, we want everything to be fixed and static variables. But life is uh, often the complete opposite of being static. It's the ultimate variable. And there's so many things that are outside of your control. You have to just focus on the things that are in your control and do them to your best ability. So how do we, uh, how do we go from being so dependent on outcome so dependent on things we can't control, so dependent on the outside variables and start to actually take control of our own lives and ultimately live the lives that we want to live. Well, the first thing about letting go of the outcome is not necessarily letting go of the outcome, but maybe shifting what your outcome actually is. For instance, if you were to start a business and you are focusing on running a successful business so your outcome is having a successful business it may be very hard for you to actually achieve that goal because in the back of your mind you don't want it to fail right and success and failure are pretty ambiguous terms but i think we all have an idea of what that looks like so maybe instead of you doing that as your outcome maybe your outcome should actually be for you to learn how to run a business maybe this business will just be so that you can gain knowledge and experience as opposed to trying to you know be a millionaire or make it super big for instance one of the projects that I'm currently working on right now we're not while we do have big goals and big dreams to have a million members uh, join this program I can't really talk about it but join this uh, service or product Right now, we're not focused too much on that. We're just focusing on making a really great product and service. So that shift in outcome, we're not always worried about 
on our day-to-day -day operations. Oh, are is people gonna like this? Or are people gonna join? Yeah, we do take those things into consideration, but we're really focused on what can we do to make the app great, not will people join? So our outcome, because of our uh, shift in outcome, we have different actions that give different results. Whereas if we were worried, would people actually use this? It would probably be a longer process to actually developing, designing, and creating the app. So slow down the whole process. As well, this, this, this also affects day-to-day -day things. Things like your health. A lot of people, they don't want to uh, work out because they're afraid they'll get like too big, which is very strange. But um, they're afraid of losing uh, whatever aesthetics that they have. I find especially with women, they don't want to hit the gym because they, they're trying so hard to look good that they won't do the thing that actually makes them look good. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's a very weird paradox that, that you have. And this also appears a lot in your love life where um, because you're trying so hard to either keep someone you're dating or try to date someone and you're so afraid of losing them, it makes you very needy and weird. You're always trying to uh, present yourself in a certain way. So you might actually be meeting people you shouldn't be meeting because you're not being authentic or you might feel like you're very, you're like walking on thin ice during the whole relationship and not even uh, intimate relationships, but even friendships. Like if you're trying to be, trying to be cool and control the outcome of what people think about you, instead of just you know living life and having fun, you're going to be focused on how cool you can be, even though that doesn't really make sense. And uh, that's why the title of the video is "You Can't Be Cool and Be a Millionaire at the Same Time," because often the things that we're chasing after will, if we're focused too much on it, instead of the things we can do right now will morph us and make us uh, pretty pretty ineffective in whatever we have to do to achieve the, the goal. Like when I first started my clothing company, I had to look really stupid a lot of the time. I would phone suppliers and they'd be like, who the, f who the fuck are you? Who is this kid phoning us, asking us for quotes on like 10, 10 shirts or like five hats, you know? I had to look pretty stupid. I didn't have many opportunities to look cool. I was running a business. Oh, oh. Car. But yeah, it, it, you're gonna have to look really fucking stupid. When I first started this YouTube channel, it looked fucking stupid because I had like one video, no subscribers. I mean, I don't really have many subscribers now, and it still looks stupid. But, and if I was focused on, oh my god, if I, I don't have subscribers, I don't have views, I'll probably stop doing this. But that's not my outcome. My outcome is to learn and to express myself. So you're gonna you're gonna have to let go of the outcome. You're gonna have to let go of these little stories, and these identities that you build for yourself. Of oh, I need to have this. Uh, oh, I don't want to fail. Blah blah blah. And these are just thoughts, and they hold you back. So now that we know what exactly it is that uh, makes it so hard to achieve our goals, being outcome dependent, wanting to look cool, or whatever it is. How do we how do we actually get rid of this? Well, there's actually a couple of tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to help uh, realign and refocus what you're actually trying to get out of whatever you're doing to have the maximum amount of output. So the first thing, as I mentioned, is just to take it as a learning experience. Don't take it so much as something that you have to get uh, right now in this moment but more as something that is a uh, is, is fun even if it doesn't work out like almost like an experiment so that you don't have so much pressure on yourself just enjoy the process whatever it is and take it as a learning experience that would be the ultimate tool that's something that i use all the time and that's why i haven't been so afraid to try all sorts of craziness and madness that most people would be scared fucking shitless to try. I've, I've tried a lot of stupid shit in my life. So, that's something that really helps me. I'm gonna cross this street here. A another great tool to use, besides taking everything as a learning experience, is um, just, number two is actually to uh, embrace and exaggerate whatever you're feeling. This is a tool they use in NLP, so for instance, 
let's say that you're afraid that if you start this business, people will make fun of you. They're going to call you stupid. Um, they're not going to approve of whatever it is you're doing. All right, so let's embrace the fact that that will probably happen. And in our minds, just exaggerate it. So just think of the worst possible scenar scenarios and then just make it like times 10. Like your parents disown you. You have to live in the fucking streets and be a hobo. Eating eating shit out of a trash can. Someone comes and stabs you because your, your product sucks. They, they buy it online. They're like, this is terrible. And they track you down and they come to your house and they fucking just shank you. And now when, when you're doing this, you're, you're going to start to laugh because you're going to realize how silly these exaggerated thoughts are. But what even better is that you'll realize how silly the thoughts that you're having right now are too. They're just thoughts and ideas. They don't actually mean anything. The only thing that uh, these fears mean are the, the labels and meanings that we give them ourselves. So that's another great technique to use to actually get over yourself and get over your uh, desire to control the outcome. Those are probably the two most effective methods. Uh, the third and a bit more advanced method is just to be aware of when you are being outcome dependent and be aware of why. So this is very powerful because once you know why you're trying to control the outcome, you're actually getting to the root cause of the problem, not the symptom. So let's say, for example, you're trying to control your how much money your business makes and you're very, very focused on that. Let's say you're making only 4,000, you wanna hit uh, 10,000 next month. So you just like, like if I don't hit, make 10,000, I'm, I'm like a loser. I, I, uh, this is a failure. Try to evaluate, you know, and think, uh, if I actually don't make 10,000 next month, would I actually be a failure? Uh, you know, would that actually be that bad? Would I be, actually be a loser? And uh, by becoming aware, you can also start looking at the opposite end of the spectrum. For example, you could think to yourself, all right, well, if, even if I don't make 10,000, what is the positive things that I could learn from this experience? You know, uh, besides the money, what are the, uh, the experiences and the events that would be beneficial for me? Even if uh, I don't actually hit the 10K mark next month. Or even if this business fails, you know, uh, if I look so stupid or silly, what what benefits might there be beyond having a successful business? And this will actually really help to um, not only see through your own bullshit, but see through see the opposite side of things. So see the positive side in whatever outcome that you're trying to control. And then you'll start to realize that there's all these other benefits to whatever it is that you want to do and there's all these other benefits to even not getting what you actually want so that's pretty much it for this video that's why you can't be a millionaire and be cool you can't start a business and expect it always to succeed because honestly in life shit happens don't let it uh, become a part of your identity where if something fails it's all on you it is on you but at the end of the day Try to try to learn from it and grow from it as opposed to becoming jaded and defeated and letting that that story of I'm a failure crush you and just move on and then you can be that lame ass who has a million dollars as always just have a good day and just live the life that you want to live